similarities between Hinduism and Islam which is not commonly known by most of the followers of the religion except a few who are well versed with the scriptures. So let us discuss the similarities between Hinduism and Islam. The glorious Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 177, it says, It is not righteousness that you turn your face to the east or west, but it is righteousness that you believe in Allah, that you believe in the last day, that you believe in the angels, you believe in his books, and you believe in his messengers. There's a hadith mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 1, in the book of Iman, chapter number 2, hadith number 6, a person approaches Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and asks him, what is Iman? The Prophet replies that Iman is having faith in Allah, Almighty God, in his angels, in his books, in life after death, and in his messengers, and in destiny, in Qadr. So basically, there are six pillars of Iman in Islam. The first is believing in God. Number two, in his angels. Number three, in his books. Number four, in his messengers. Number five, in the hereafter, that life after death. And number six, in Qadr, that is destiny. So let's discuss the similarities between Hinduism and the pillars of Iman in Islam. The first is the concept of God. Let us understand what is the concept of God in Hinduism. If you ask the common Hindu that how many gods does he believe in? Some may say three, some may say ten, some may say hundred, some may say thousand, while others may say thirty-three crores, three hundred and thirty million. But if you ask a learned Hindu, who is well versed with the scriptures, he will tell you that the Hindus should believe and worship only one almighty God. But the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. The common Hindu says that everything is God. The tree is God, the sun is God, the moon is God, the human being is God, the snake is God. What we Muslims say, everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe, yes. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God, the sun belongs to God, the moon belongs to God, the human being belongs to God, the snake belongs to God. So the major difference between the common Hindu and the common Muslim is, the common Hindu says, everything is God. We Muslims say everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe, yes. The major difference is only the apostrophe, yes. If we can solve this difference, if we can solve this difference of apostrophe S, the Hindus and the Muslims will be united. How do you do it? Ta'ala wila kalmitin sawa in banana bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'udha illallah. That we worship none but one Almighty God. Let us try and understand what the Hindu scriptures have to speak about Almighty God in Hinduism. Amongst the Hindu scriptures, one of the sacred scriptures are the Upanishads. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. It says, Ekkam Evidityam. It's a Sanskrit quotation which means God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Shwetashvatar Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9. Na chase kasij, janita na chadipa. Of him, there are no lords. He has got no master. Almighty God has got no parents, he has got no mother, he has got no father, he has got no superior. It's mentioned in the Svetash Patar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, asti, which means, of him there is no likeness. Almighty God has got no likeness. It's mentioned in the Svetash Patar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 20, Almighty God is imageless. No one can see him with his eyes. No one can see his form with his eyes. And amongst the Hindu scripture, the most popular is the Bhagavad Gita. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20. 
all those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods. Bhagavad Gita chapter number 7 verse number 20 says that all materialistic people, they worship demigods including idols. And amongst the Hindu scriptures, the most sacred are the Vedas. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, Na Tassi Asti. Of him, there are no images. Almighty God has got no images. He is unborn. Only he should be worshipped. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 8, Almighty God is imageless and pure. It's mentioned in Yajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 9, Andhatma Pavishanti Ya Asamvuti Vupaste. Andhatma means darkness, Pravishanti means entering, and Asambuti means the natural things like fire, water, air. So Yajurve chapter number 40 verse number 9 says, they are entering darkness, those who worship the natural things like fire, water, air, etc. And the verse continues, they are entering more in darkness, those who worship the Sambuti, that is the created things like table, chair, idols, etc. It's further mentioned in the Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 58, verse number 3, Dev Maha Asi, verily great is Almighty God. And amongst the Vedas, the most sacred is the Rig Ved. It's mentioned in Rig Ved, book number 1, hymn number 164, verse number 46, Ikkam Sat Vipra Bahuda Vedante. Truth is one, God is one, sages call him by a variety of names. And the same message that God is one and sages call him by a variety of names is repeated in Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 114, verse number 5. And Rig Ved alone in book 2, hymn number 1, gives no less than 33 different attributes to Almighty God. One amongst them, is mentioned in Rig Ved, book number two, hymn number one, verse number three, is Brahma. If you translate Brahma into English, it means the creator. If you translate into Arabic, it means Khalik. We Muslims have got no objection if someone says Almighty God is Khalik, or creator, or Brahma, but if someone says Almighty God is Brahma who has got four heads and on each head is a crown, we Muslims take strong exception to it. Moreover, you are going against Sveta Siddhar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, which says, Na Tasipati Ma Asti. Of him, there is no likeness. The other attribute given in Rig Ved, book number 2, hymn number 1, verse number 3, is Vishnu. If you translate Vishnu into English, it means the sustainer, it means the cherisher. If you translate it into Arabic, it is somewhat similar to Rab. We Muslims have got no objection if someone calls Almighty God as Rab, sustainer, or cherisher, or Vishnu. But if someone says Vishnu is Almighty God who is relaxing on a couch of snakes, traveling in the sea, or flying in the air on the bird Garuda has four hands. One right hand is the chakra, the discus. The left hand he has the conch. We Muslims take strong objection to it. Moreover, you are going against Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, which says, Na Tassipati Ma Asti. Of him, there are no images. Almighty God has got no images. It's further mentioned in Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 1, verse number 1, Ma Chadanadi Sansad. Praise him alone. He alone deserves worship. It's mentioned in Rig Ved, book number 6, hymn number 45, verse number 16. Ya ek it mushtihi. Praise him alone. He alone deserves worship. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism is Ekkam Brahm Dyuta Naste. Nehna Naste Kinchan. Bhagwan Eki hai, Dusra Nahi hai. Nahi hai, Nahi hai, Zarabi Nahi hai. There is only one God, not a second one. Not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, you shall understand the concept of God in Hinduism. Let's understand the concept of God in Islam. The best reply.